like to talk over a very brief example of two-line playing, implying some chords and inversions here, and perhaps these relationships on the fingerboards and these shapes will allow you to start moving around and improvising in this style if that's what you wish to do. So we're going to have our friends a perfect fifth, the D and A, 12th fret and 10th fret of the 4th and 2nd strings. And we're catching B flat there at the 11th fret on the 2nd string. Melodic pitch. And then we're going to reach B flat and A. This is 13 and 10, strings 5 and 2. And that's an appoggiatura, which means it's a non-chord tone that's landing on the beat right here, and it resolves. So we get B flat and G. Temptation might be to say it's part of G minor, but really I'm hearing this as part of A7 flat 9. This would be the flat 9 and the flat 7 of A7 flat 9. If we take this shape, now we have, by moving down a minor third to 10 and 9, this is the flat 7 and 5th of A. Here's the 5th and 3rd of A7 flat 9, frets 7 and 6. If we get all the way down here, we're at frets 4 and 3. And you can hear the, the implied root there of A open. So now with that in mind and in your ears, that would go right to D minor in our ears. A lot of this is about anticipating resolutions and anticipating where the lines might go and also knowing enough progressions that if you choose a certain switch track you can take it there. So in this case we're just going to do one minor five, one minor five, one minor, and we'll go on. Ten and twelve, 13, 13 and 10, with the appoggiatura G on the 12th fret. And now these guys drop, these sixths drop to A and F, 12 and 10. And we're coming up, A and F, 12 and 10 is going to 12th fret G. And another, another appoggiatura, 10 and 10, G and F, coming down to E, releasing, 9th fret, and now we're going to come together, we've had a voice exchange, so D and A has become A and D, 7th fret of the 4th and 3rd strings. voices are pretty close together if we if we start moving them they're going to run into each other really quick which on the guitar leaves us nowhere to go so four and sorry the uh, seventh fret interval of a fourth a and d we're going to raise up the melody to the ninth fret seven nine little fingers great here because at the 10th fret of the 5th and 3rd strings, G and F, E, G and F, keep going to where we have G and G, this is now 10 and 8, and we come out to, which could be heard as a first inversion D minor chord, F and A, 8 and 10, we're going to raise up to the upper neighbor here, so from 10 to 11, and we're going to lower that bass so we get some contrary motion. So here's 7 and 
11 down to 8, E and B flat down to G, which you'll hear also gives us that A7 flat 9 sound. to F and A, 8 and 10. You could put the D on top there if you want. It's really crying out for... that D in the middle there on the seventh fret of the third string. So if we have F, D, and A, frets 8, 7, and 10. I'll play it one more time slowly all the way through. Side note too, I notice my breathing. Exhale. That there's a that these phrases breathe in a certain way, and see if you can notice what your breathing's doing, and if you're holding your breath through the whole thing, or if there's a ebb and flow to your breathing. Uh, noticed from watching these videos that I make for you that I'm, my mouth is really involved in what I play as I'm almost as if I have a horn a saxophone or something in there and I'm phrasing it with my lips as well so I hope this line finds you well and enjoying your music having the luxury of playing the guitar and appreciating that fact. And I wish you, as always, a very, very good day.